Hello everybody, my name's Matthew and welcome to my garden. It's a quite a small courtyard garden. It's only about five and a half by six and a half meters in size, which is about 18 by 21 foot in old money. And uh, we've lived here 15 years. When we moved in, it was a concrete square with lots of overgrown brambles and weeds and a self-seeded sycamore tree. So everything you see has happened over the last 15 years. And the other thing that makes it a little bit of a challenge in this garden is that there is a height difference. So the house is about four and a half feet higher than the garden. So you'll see how we've dealt with that height difference to try and connect the two spaces. You'll notice that green is a big feature. It's my favourite colour and I love the different shapes and textures of the plants. I love ferns in the garden and you can get them in all different shapes and sizes, whether they're big, long ones or smaller, narrow ones. The wet winter we've had has meant they've been really lush this spring. Um, but whether you have a place that is dry or a place that's damp or a place that's shady or in sun, there is a fern that will fit in almost every location. And they're great in pots as well. Um, under my trees, I find that the soil there is really shallow and gritty and not great for planting things into. But what I've done is I've created a sort of microclimate uh, by putting lots of pots under the trees with ferns in and, and they've thrived in that location and look really nice. Having a pond and water in the garden is lovely. The sound of it is really relaxing and it's essential if you want to attract wildlife. We've been really lucky to attract frogs into the garden and each spring they laid spawn which turn into tadpoles which turn into frogs which hopefully help keep the slugs and snails at bay a little bit. Uh, this is my third attempt at pond in the garden. The first one was simply a metal trough. The second one I dug into the ground, um, but the problems I had with that was the first one wasn't big enough. The second one, the water level went up and down. I was always seeing the liner. So this was actually a present to myself for my 40th birthday, which everyone thinks it's one big metal trough, but actually it's not that at all. Um, it's actually 50 centimetres deep, so it goes down about another 20 centimetres below the patio. Um, and it's a frame of marine ply, uh, which inside have had a liner made that just fits in and overhangs that. And then this is a core 10 steel um, metal frame that doesn't have a bottom that slides over the top and has a lip. So the lip hides the water if it goes up and down a little bit, as it inevitably does if it's hot. Um, but it fills up again if it rains again. And because it's 50 centimetres deep, it means I can grow um, water lily in there, which is something I always wanted to have. Uh, this is a little water lily called Nymph, which will flower in August and has these beautiful little white small flowers. This is a, a black bamboo, which is a really stunning plant to have in the garden. And it's been there for about 10 years and people often worry that bamboo will take over your garden. And some can be massive, but this one's fairly clump forming. I give it a, a trim every year. So I'll take out maybe 10, 15 of the stems. Um, and I also strip all the leaves off the lower stems. So the young ones uh, stems are a light green. And then as they get older, they get darker and turn this wonderful black. And taking the leaves off means you see the wonderful stems. But of course, at the top where the deck is, uh, you get to hear the lovely rustling sound in, in the winter. Um, it hasn't taken over the house. It's not threatened the foundations. So I would definitely recommend bamboo in a garden. It's just about choosing the right one for the right place. 
Well, I share my garden with lots of wildlife, but also share it with a little furry girl called Jojo and another furry boy called Zolly. So um, my plants, I do have to think about things that won't poison the dogs, but they're fairly respectful. They don't dig too many holes. They do like to chase birds, this one especially, but um, I think you've got to think about what's important for your garden and, and it's got to suit, the, suit you and your lifestyle. So um, sharing it with a dog is a great benefit. Um, and uh, she likes it too. This amazing plant is a gunnera, which is it's like a giant ornamental rhubarb. It's a, actually a prehistoric plant. I think it was around in the time of the dinosaurs. Um, and just goes to show you, you can grow some fantastic plants in a small garden. Uh, this obviously needs to live in a pond in a moist environment. But what I've done here is I've put it inside this rather large water butt. And as long as the water stays at least half full in there, so I never empty it completely, the gunnera is perfectly happy it produces these wonderful seed heads, which you can see just between the leaves. Um, it will die back in the winter, um, and I cover it just to make sure the frost doesn't get the leaves, but in the spring it comes back again and puts on this amazing show. I love hostas, but hostas are really difficult to grow when you're competing with slugs and snails, which I have lots of in the garden. And I've tried lots of different things from sheep's or pellets to gravel and coffee grinds. But the thing that I found works the best is if you take a bulb of garlic and you boil it up so it gets really pungent liquid and you keep that in a jar and add a bit to a water spray bottle and fill it up with water. And then what you need to do you should take your spray and you spray it onto the leaves of the hostas and uh, you just need to make sure you do it again if it rains and as you can see I've got hardly a bite out of these hostas this year they look really stunning um, I'm so pleased with them it's definitely worth a try This is definitely one of my favourite hostas. It's called Mouse Ears and it's just so sweet. A tiny little glaucous green leaves, which as you can see, just look like mouse ears. I like to have pots in the garden, um, all sorts, metal ones, terracotta ones. Uh, I like to put them on tops of walls. They make a great use of space. You can put lots of different things in them. Um, and you do have to water them, but I don't water them mine every day. Maybe a couple of days a week if it's really hot. Plants will normally tell you if they need a drink, but they're great because you can move them around. So if something looks great, you can put it in a prominent position. And if it's looking not so good, you just move it to a, qu a quieter, less obvious location. I've even been able to grow a rose in a pot that's climbing on the wall. It give it plenty of feed in the spring and uh, water it well 
but it produces this beautiful scented flower, which is just stunning. I have pots on the table outside the kitchen doors, like the hostas, so that when something's looking great, I can put them in a plumber position where I'll see them every day. Um, and then when they're looking not so good, move them around and then change the display and put something different there. So that's a real advantage of pots. When we moved into the garden, the space at the back of the, by the wall had a self-seeded sycamore tree, which was about to push the wall over. They're lovely trees, but they're just not right in a small garden. So I dug that out and planted these three hornbeam trees, which have been in now about 15 years, because uh, I know that. They were my 30th birthday present from my friends. As you can see, they form this amazing wall of green um, framing the garden. Hornbeam is really tough. It'll grow in wet ground, in dry ground, in really rubbish soil and uh, it needs a trim once a year like a uh, hedge so this will get trimmed around about June. I actually get someone in to do it now because I've decided I don't want to climb that high but it keeps them at this height and uh, it just is such a lovely uh, leaf. It starts to come into leaf around April and will continue to be in leaf till around November when they start to go a lovely yellow colour and then they finally drop but um, even then you've got this lovely frame and these lovely statuesque pillars of trunks. From up on the terrace, this is where we get the sun in the sort of late afternoon and evening. So it's quite a warm environment compared to the rest of the garden. And, but it's also quite exposed. You can see we get uh, the wind over the rooftops, which makes the trees rustle, which is lovely, but means that the plants have to be pretty hardy to be able to withstand a battering if it's really windy. Some of you may have noticed we have two garden taps on the wall and wondering why. Well, one of them is cold for watering the garden and the other one is a warm tap for washing down pampered pooches when they've been mucky in the river. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed visiting the garden virtually and I hope you'll be able to come back and visit again in 2021 for Bedminster Secret Gardens. <laughs>